Hey guys, it's me, Ronald Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. We'll look at the nor'easter. We'll also go out west where a small cold front, a minor cold front, is racing through Colorado into northern New Mexico. Here's the view in uh, Winter Park. We've got some light snow coming down. I'd, I'd forecast an inch or two of accumulation, probably a couple inches up there. Winter Park, Eldora, um, that would be another place to hit. Uh, Loveland and Arapaho Basin, in fact, Speaking of Arapahoe Basin, there's Arapahoe Basin, the lift going up into Montezuma Bowl. You can see some of that shrouding effect with those snow showers up there. Yeah, probably an inch or two up there on top of the Continental Divide running down into Summit County. Uh, steamboats in on that list as well. Let me just show you the pattern. I've got the eastern view up. This is the water vapor, so the oranges are going to be your drier air aloft. So the flow is basically coming way up into BC and then running down like this. And there's a big trough over the Gulf, and then right there is the key spot, and then the flow is kind of like this. So this is your storm track, your jet stream, and there are a couple of things to point out. This is a long cold front. This is the one that extends and it's running through Colorado as we speak. And the reason I'm taking my time on this is because it becomes a player for this big potential east coast, northeast type of snowstorm. Um, here is where I'm going to circle it. This is the area to watch for development of a low pressure. So what will happen is two things. The low will start to develop and this cold front will come down and meet it. And the two may merge, probably merge, and then basically develop into one larger storm system or nor'easter and then it tracks up um, towards the northeast. And depending on how close it gets to the coast, that determines who gets the heaviest snow. But back out west, we've got a large dome of high pressure sitting right about here. You can see the uh, dry air over California. It has been an incredibly dry January. I do see ch signs of changes on the 1st of February and beyond. It does look more active for the west. How long that active stretch lasts is really in question. Does it last the 1st through the 10th? And then it goes back to high pressure? Don't know yet. But let me show you what the GFS is thinking the American model here. Um, so we'll get a sense of how everything shakes out. There's that light snow in Colorado moving into northern New Mexico by this afternoon tonight. Then it's gone. All right, watch off the Carolina coast and also watch some of that snow coming through Ohio and down through West Virginia. The two meet up and there it is. So there's your merger. This is, there's Friday night. There's Saturday morning right there. Big low 980, way off the coast. Boston's going to get nailed. Um, but look how far inland, or lack of snow, how, it doesn't go that far inland, the snow. It stays in Massachusetts, probably brushes southeast Vermont, uh, eastern Vermont, probably brushes Maine. So here is Saturday night, and there is Sunday morning. It's long gone. So it all happens on Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, with blizzard conditions in the northeast and then it's gone. It actually drops to 974, which is very respectable. 969, very respectable. Um, so it goes from 990 to 969. So uh, that's very respectable, 21 millibars. Um, eh, to be a bomb, it's got to be 24 millibars. So there you go. Uh, the thing is, I'm not forecasting that much snow across the, the big ski areas, as I'll show you. I've got a map for the Northeast coming up. Out West, there's really nothing there until we get to the 1st of February. And here we go. There's the 31st, and here's the 1st, the morning of the 1st. You can see that front dropping down through Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. That moves through. It becomes a larger storm. Look at the low spinning up in Amarillo. Um, so that's Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Here's the 2nd of February. Larger storm system taking shape um, across uh, the panhandles. And then that storm moves out to the east. Um, then what happens, there may be another storm right there, another cold front that slides down through Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, 4th, 5th. And then that moves and becomes a larger storm for the northeast. So there's not a ton of action, but it does become more active for the west. But I don't see anything big for California. So that continues to be a big problem. All right, let's go into the totals here. And I do this as a, a total all the way from basically all of today included through the 5th of February across the West. And because of all of those cold fronts running down through Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, northern New Mexico, you can see the totals during that time period. Some of them brush Utah, but again, look at California. Without anything moving through California, that is just really bad. 
um, through the 5th of February. Um, and really not much at all for the Wasatch. Pacific Northwest does okay. Let's look at my uh, Northeast totals. Um, yeah, we've had to bring these down uh, quite a bit. Actually, I brought these down another notch because the low just keeps cr keeps creeping a little bit further off the coast and pulling the heavy snow band away from the big ski areas. I mean, one to three through Vermont, parts of uh, eastern Massachusetts will do okay. But even New Hampshire, I mean, I brought those numbers down. We're looking at probably six to ten. 6 to 10 with blizzard conditions up in parts of Maine. That's the way it looks to me right now. So there you go. Enjoy it. Um, and always appreciate you tuning in here.